All right, fighthype.com. Happy to be joined here with 17 and 0, 15 knockouts in the lightweight division. Algeria, Africa's own uh, Jamel da Dahu. Because it's Jamel, but it's with a D. Yes. So it's she Jamel. Silent. <laughs> My parents, they put it there just to confuse people, I guess. <laughs> like, like Django. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But man, just running into you here at the City Athletic Gym in Vegas, amazing story you were telling me. Were you, is that true, you were in a wheelchair just a few yes, years ago? Yeah, brother, yeah, for two years. Been in a wheelchair for two years, I had like four back surgeries. I've been told I'll never be able to walk again. And uh, I made my way out from uh, being in handicap for two years and you know, uh, basically to fight again. So that's a, that's a dream comes true. I just made my comeback. Uh, like uh, six to eight months ago, I had three fights, tuna fights, back-to-back -back fights, just to get back in shape and stuff. In the last three fights, I had a record of three and two, like three wins, two knockouts. And uh, hopefully there is a big news coming soon that I will be signed with a big promoter very soon coming, dropping very soon on my uh, Instagram and Facebook. And then hopefully I will get back to the rank and, you know, go back to... Now, just to ask, how, how, what, what got you in the, you know, wheelchair for a few years there? What happened? It just, being, being you know, young and not taking care of my body, not drinking enough water, uh, training so hard, you know, not listening to the trainer. But don't take me wrong, I wasn't listening to my trainer, like, in the positive way. I was very disciplined. Like, let's say my coach would tell me, like, you have to run just three miles, I would go six, eight miles, and it's not enough for me. So, you know, like pushing it too hard, too soon, you know, and with the time, so I hurt my disc and stuff, but for now I'm healthy, I'm not focused on that, I'm focused in the future, I'm healthy, I'm good, you know, I'm ready to rock again, and uh, make my people proud, my fans and my believers, especially the, the ones they don't believe in us. Did that happen back home uh, in Algeria? Yes, yeah. yes, it did. That's, that's Algerian's flag, right, right here. Yeah, it happens back home in Algeria. Is that because the heat? Part? I mean, not not the heat. It just um, uh, let's say we don't have uh, like uh, like boxing is not big over there. We have soccer, but you guys, you know, we call it football over there. Right. It's not soccer. So football is very big in Algeria. So boxing, we don't have uh, like uh, people, you know. We don't have the right uh, trainers, like we might do respect to all trainers that are there, they helped us, but you know, they are not qualified like here in the States, right. you know what I mean? It's like, you just, you do it on your own, you just go and train and run and spot every day and do stuff. So when I came here, at first in 2014, Roy Jones Jr. who brought me here to the state, because I was the WBC Youth World Champion at that time. And I was ranked number uh, 16 after Floyd Mayweather and he was a world champion in the welterweight division. So uh, I came here with uh, Roy. I didn't like the contract they offered me. I just stayed here and, you know, I got hurt. Unfortunately, you know, my career uh, went south with the injury and everything. But, you know, I keep believing and I never lost hope. And, you know, and here we go again, now, wrapping my hands for sparring. <laughs> we, we know you got uh, 15 knockouts and 17 wins. Are you a puncher? Yeah, I am. It looks like. <laughs> yeah, if you, see, if you see my record, it well, looks we know, like you know, I'm a Well, we know sometimes puncher. it can be an accumulation, yes. or, or are you more of a No, I'm, I'm a heavy-handed, I'm a heavy-handed, yeah, I'm a heavy-handed guy. And uh, now I'm, I'm trying to learn, you know, the U.S. style and the U.S. technique. It just, you know, like hit and don't get hit, you know what I mean? It's like the sweet science. So I'm working uh, along with uh, Chris. Um, Coach Chris Ben. Yeah, yeah. yes. Coach Chris and uh, he been good to me and uh, you know he's teaching me new stuff and new ways how to uh, to become a world champion. And Jamel, who's some of the guys you've had a chance to spar with out here in Vegas? Oh, so I spar with Teofimo Lopez, I spar with uh, Tank, I spar with uh, uh, Ugas, I spar with uh, uh, Ramos, the 147 uh, fighter. Yeah, Evo Ramos. Uh -huh. I fought with uh, yeah, like a lot of fighters, man. Sean Porter. I sparred with Sean Porter. I had really... Sean Porter is my toughest sparring so far in my really? career. Really? Oh, yeah. He was good. Yeah. yeah, he was a beast, man. Like, he was smelling me, like, you know, like coming into me, like, all the time. And, uh, yeah, I have a lot of, lot, of, lot of names. Like, the list goes on and on. I gotta ask you, um, how, how would you compare Lopez and Tank Davis? Who punched harder and, and who's the better fighter? I mean, I know it's sparring, you can't gather everything just from sparring a guy. Yeah, so to be honest, 
I see that Lopez has a lot to bring to the table when it's you know, like the quickness and you know like uh, you know gives you different looks um, Tank he's a heavy puncher I mean both they are great you know what I mean it just I'll go with uh, Teofimo he has more more skills more skills he, he had more tricks up his sleeve more tricks uh, you know he's like a, he's a really awkward style sometimes and now uh, you know like heavy puncher and uh, he changed angles and he switched his feet and uh, tank is more just coming forward and big punch and don't take me wrong like tank is a great I'm not saying tank and, is and not fast but, too yeah right? yeah fast and powerful and you know and plus he's a southpaw so he gives you more trouble but you know both great fighters I would love to see their fight you know fighting each other and then we will see who's better Who, who's just got the power though not skills just for the power I'll go with tank I'll go with Tank. Tank, he caught me with a really clean uppercut. Uppercut. Yeah, with a clean uppercut. I I didn't I didn't eat well for like two three days after the sparring. To be honest. Because you didn't eat well. Yeah. I mean yes. Yeah. Just, I, I couldn't I couldn't eat anything hard. The jaw. Yeah, my the jaw. Yeah, it was like very painful. Uh, you know, Teofimo caught me. You know, in the body shot. I also felt it. Yeah, both both. You know, but. And the power, I'll go with Tank. That uppercut's a mofo, man. I, man. Yeah. In sparring, yeah, I even yeah. with 16-ounce gloves, yes. it looks like a yeah. knockout shot. Yeah. So, that's yes. tricky. So, uh, I, got, I got a call from, from his manager that we need to spar, and they were very interested in signing with me, like AB promotion, whatever. So, I came down to Mayweather Jam around like 6 p.m. We spar with Tank. So, I was with no trainer, just by myself. So uh, one of his teammates, that was like, you know, con giving me water and stuff in the corner. So my corner, my corner mate was on behind me. When I got the uppercut from Tank, I swear to God, I saw him. Like the uppercut, like was crazy, man. Like you gotta respect them, you know. Like, Who's the left uppercut? Uh, yes. Yeah. He fainted and then he went with the uppercut, <laughs> and then boom. That's his shot. Yeah. But I was, you know, I was very happy that you know he didn't take me down. And I took it very clean <laughs> from Tank and it didn't go down, so that's a plus for me, you know what I mean? Coming away from inactive for six years, being handicapped, being in the wheelchair, sparring straight with Tank and with the world champions, I'm, you know, I'm blessed. Did you feel like you got your respect in there? Yeah, he respect me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was really nice to me, and you know, after sparring, we talk, and and he was very amazed on my story, and he asked me a bunch of questions. Did like, he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he, he could be, he could be on some. I don't. He's yes. in killer mode. Yes. You don't even want to talk yes. to the guy after yes. they work. So. No, no, no. After yeah. the sparring, we took a picture, and he asked me a bunch of questions, and and uh, he wanted more sp uh, more rounds. But I couldn't give him more rounds. <laughs> yeah, just you know, That's I wasn't I in shape. Today, yeah, I wasn't yeah. in shape and stuff. He wanted so bad. He wanted more rounds, but I couldn't give him more rounds. You know, mm -hmm. but hopefully next. And, next and lastly, time. Jamel, man, you're wrapped up and ready to spar. Just uh, Ugas. Um, what can you tell me about sparring with him? Is is he uh, uh, tougher than he looks on very tape? Very awkward. Okay. Very very awkward. And uh, and Ugas, we know that he doesn't do good in sparring, but he amazes you in the ring. So we have to wait. Mm -hmm. We have to wait. Uh, by the way, yesterday I was in Mount Charleston. I found him running uphill Mount Charleston. Ugas is running up there yes, in the mountains on, on a Sunday. Mm. Yeah. So he's taking it very seriously, you know. Does yeah, his right hand have po more power on it than the knockout show? I mean, is that yeah, it's very powerful. Both hands. Yeah, I remember both hands. Even his jab. He has like really weird, awkward jab. The way he throw his hooks and you know, but as long as he did really good with me in the sparring and you know we did good, but I believe that Ugas is better in the fight than sparrings. You think he could pull it off with Spence? Yeah. Huh? Why not? Yeah, anything can happen in boxing, you know. Thank yeah. you, Jamel, man. You're very welcome. Yeah, 29 years me. old, 17 and 0, 15 knockouts, and maybe the hottest division in boxing at lightweight. You yep. overcome a lot coming from Algeria, and uh, just wishing you the best and getting back Thank in the you. ring, man. Thank you, man. Thank Thanks, you. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you.